how's it going? So today we're going to cover something very specific having to do with wheelchair joysticks and what to do if they get damaged. Specifically the power button, whether it's the toggle like this or the older style that has the push buttons on the top. Legal disclaimer, don't be dumb, don't do anything in this video, it's all for entertainment. Whatever, I don't know, I'm tired of people trying to sue me. Let's say for example you decide for whatever reason that it's a good idea to get onto a commercial airline flight with your power chair, maybe it's not avoidable, and maybe they damage your chair. And when they bring your chair back up after you've gotten off the plane, instead of having functioning buttons like this, you get the soft keys, we've got the speed, adjustment, power, on, off, all that. Let's say it looks like this instead. And the power toggle is completely missing. You've got some buttons here that are missing. The speed paddles are gone. Maybe this is also missing. This is actually a real scenario. These things kind of stick up and it's real easy in the luggage bay of an airplane or with baggage handlers manhandling a chair around to rip these things off or break them. The same goes for older style joysticks too. As you can see, there used to be a power button up here, but there is not one there anymore. There's a couple of different methods that will work on these joysticks to get them to turn on and off, assuming that the wiring hasn't been damaged and everything is still pretty much okay. There's gonna be time codes down below. We're gonna be taking a look at Invacare, Quantum, uh, Amy Systems, and a couple of the random joysticks that I have around here attached to different chairs. The short version is though, all you need to do is carry a set of headphones with you. And there are what they call monoports on the bottom of all of the joysticks pretty, well, not all of them, but a majority of them that you can use to turn the chair on and off. We're gonna take a look at the headphone trick a little bit later on, but let's have a look at another way that you can get your joystick to turn on if you happen to have uh, a really powerful magnet laying around. The way these things work, at least in the case of the PJSM and the CJSM2, which I'm gonna show you here in a minute, these are completely sealed and there's little magnets inside there that move into different positions and trip a sensor to turn the chair on and off. Just so you can see, here's one of those toggle switches. There's a spring in there. And then here's the magnet down near the bottom. Magnet. Those of you that have been driving wheelchair vans for a very long time and back into the 80s and 90s, you may recognize this. This is a magnet stick that they used to use for opening and closing doors on wheelchair vans. This is a very powerful rare earth magnet. I always say neodymium. I'm not even sure how to say it correctly anymore. But this magnet is strong enough to actually overpower the sensors in here. Well, not overpower them, but trip the sensor to get your chair to turn on and off. Basically, you're gonna take the thing and hold it somewhere in this general vicinity. Usually I found it works to just kind of wave it around here and then your chair will turn on. Let me show you that real quick on the Permobile F3 that I'm sitting in. Okay, this is a 2021 Permobile F3 here. We've got the standard PJSM joystick and we're going to assume that this knob has been broken off and is not there anymore. Here we have our magnet and all I have to do to get the chair to turn on is kind of wave it around here in this region and there you go, the thing powers up. It doesn't always work to change the speed profiles. As you can see here, I'm in profile one. Depending on how old the joystick and some other factors and the power of your magnet and all that, you may not be able to get it to switch between drive profiles. Typically, the sensors are opposite the location. So if you're pushing the switch up, the magnet you wanna trigger would be down here. And if you're pushing it down, it would be up here. But in this case, you can just turn it on and off by waving the magnet in this general vicinity. Now this is not gonna work with your typical fridge magnet. It needs to be a very powerful one, like a rare earth magnet. If you have any neodymium magnets laying around, or really powerful ones, just try waving them around over here, and that should get your chair to turn on and off. Now as far as the speed going up and down, I haven't tried that, so let's see. Oh, there you can go. You can see, if you look at the little yellow graph here, you can see our speed is now going down. And if I wave it up here, Will it go back up? It's kind of hit or miss because the magnet's so strong. Oh. So as you can see, it kind of works. You just have to wave it around in different positions and you might be able to get it to do what you want. Typically though, I leave this turned up all the way on all my chairs so it's not as big of a deal. 
Mine actually makes a crunching sound when I use it right now. But yeah, that's the first method that if you happen to have one of these or you have a magnet, you can easily turn your chair off and on with it. Now there is another method to turn on your joystick that is a lot more widely compatible with many chairs that are out there. And let's say you don't happen to have one of these magnets lying around. Let's go back to the airport once again. You get off the flight, things are broken, whatever. You might have a set of headphones with you. There is a port on the back of these and all you need to have with you is a set of headphones. These are some old crappy iPhone ones, but they have a little quarter inch audio jack on them. All you need to do is flip up your joystick. A little easier to show on this one because it's in my hand. But on the back here, you're gonna see two different ports and one of them will be labeled with a power button or sort of like a power logo. If you look real close at this one, you can see right there above this second port, there's what kind of looks like a power logo and the other one doesn't have anything on top of it. Now these may have plugs in them. As you can see, this one's just a hole and there's a plug there. These are just a little plastic piece that you can pull up, you can throw on the floor. But these are basically just a little plastic piece. It's like a dust cover to keep debris and stuff out of there. So just pull that out. And the only thing we need to do to turn on the chair is to plug in the headphones and then immediately unplug them. Do not leave them connected. Doing that though, will fire up the chair. So here we've got the port, you can see. All we gotta do is plug this in, then unplug it, and it boots up. Same thing for turning it back off. Just plug it in and unplug it. And there you can see it's powered off. The trick is not leaving it connected. You just plug it in, unplug it. Now, it will work with any set of headphones that has a quarter inch jack. You might be able to see on this one that this is a version with a microphone and we've got four barrel sections on here. Doesn't need to be one with a microphone. Any set of headphones will work for this. Just plug it in unplug and same for turning it back off there you go now this headphone method should work on most joysticks so I'm gonna pull a few chairs from around the warehouse here and we're gonna try it on a few different ones just to verify that it works as uh, as I think it does or think it should whatever we're gonna look at some other stuff next up we have my soccer chair this one uses a CJSM2 which means that our magnet trick should work on this one I don't have a startup noise turned on. Yeah, there we go. Now it's turning on. And then for turning it back off, should be the same thing. Let's try the headphone trick. Now, since this chair does not have a swing away or a fold up armrest, I had to get down here on the floor. But we're just gonna look down here for these ports. There we go. This one has the power logo, that one has nothing. So we will unplug our little cap here. Don't lose that, it's good to keep those in place. As you can see, the joystick is currently off. So let's plug in our headphone jack and then unplug it. And it's booting up. So there we go. Works fine on the CJSM2 as well. All right, here we have a Quantum Edge 3 Stretto. This chair is running QLogic 3, but if we swing the joystick away, you can see here on the back, we have those same two ports. And again, if you look really closely, one of them has a power logo. The other one says M, but they have these same little plastic covers. So just pop these out of here. Okay, there we go. Same type of thing, just a little plug. And just a side note with these QLogic 3 joysticks, the magnet trick does not appear to work on these. I think they use a different setup. I spent a few minutes waving this all over the place and nothing happens. I, I don't remember if they use magnometers in there or how it works exactly, but uh, it doesn't seem to work on anything other than the PJSM and CJSM. Regardless though, here we have our headphones. So let's go ahead and plug these in. Unplug and chairs booting up. There we go. Now we can drive the thing around. Let's say we want to turn the thing back off. Just go ahead and plug them in here again. And there we go. Now the thing's off. So this is all fine and well, but what if you have an older chair, like this one here? This is an older Amy Systems Alltrack M. I think it's from 2016, something like that. This one has the older style of Arnett joystick that does not have the toggles. These are just little membrane switches, and these can get damaged fairly easily over time or whatnot. So 
Let's go ahead and try our headphone trick on this one. Since there's no toggles, the magnet is not going to have any effect because there's no magnetic switches in here. Just in case you're wondering, no, these are not magnetic contacts, so nothing happens there. Now this chair does have a swing up side on it. Let's make sure we're not pinching our wires back here. There we go. So now we can clearly see the bottom of our joystick. The way this chair was set up for me originally actually utilizes this other port right here. This allows me to have buttons to control the seating on this thing. Yeah, there we go. You can see all the buttons there. It's those ubiquitous uh, unlabeled blue buttons. We wound up doing that because at the time this chair was built, there was not an Arnett switch box to control the seating. Sort of like this arrangement that Permobile uses. But this chair was old enough that they didn't have that as an option yet. So they have sort of a resistive multiplier network that sends different signals in for those buttons. Anyways, as you can see here, we've got two ports on the bottom. I do not see a label on this one. Yeah, so this one doesn't appear to have labels on it, but it shouldn't necessarily matter. If you plug it into one port and nothing happens, just plug it into the other port. So let's pull our little cover out of here. Okay, there we go, little red plug. And you can see the joystick is off. And now it's powering up. And turn it back off. So even with the older style Arnett joystick, still an option in case something breaks on you. Okay, here's one I didn't even think about, the Bounder. This is an older off-road variant that I modified a bit, but it's using the Dynamic DX2 controls. This style of joystick here. I hate this control system with a passion. Um, click that up there. These things are so confusing to use. Once you get used to them, it's not too bad, but I actually don't know if it has the ports under it. I've never checked. Let's uh, carefully make sure we got enough wire here. Yeah, it looks like we're good. Let's carefully swing this thing up and have a look. Let's see here, I think those, yeah, those are screw holes. Looks like we've got a screw in there as well. Uh, don't see anything else. Might have to pull this cover off of here. This appears to be a Phillips, maybe. There we go. Okay, we've got our cover removed now, and it looks like we have three mono ports down here. There's one that's labeled on, off, and then one, and then two. And the one that's on, off is right here in the middle. Yeah, I think you might be able to see that label right, right there. It says on and off. So let's make sure our chair is off. Okay, there we go, it's off. And then we will plug our headphone cable in here. And there we go, I can hear it booting up. There we go. Try not to run over myself here. And I'm assuming turning it back off should be the same way. And there we go, now it's off. All right, cool. I was getting worried there for a minute that this thing did not have the mono ports on it, but sure enough it does. They're just underneath this little cover that you have to remove. Okay, here's one I have absolutely no idea. This is the Invacare Mark VI electronics. This is on old Dusty here, we retrofitted these electronics on here in another video. Uh, link to that up above and down below if you haven't seen that. This one, whoops, as I smash into things. This one's a little bit different because it has an actual mechanical switch position that you turn forward for it to turn on. So if that switch is off, I'm not quite sure what's gonna happen. We have two ports here. There's one labeled mono port one and two and then remote power. So, um, let's just plug in our headphones and see what happens. Oh, it still turns on, even though the switch wasn't activated. Let's see, we'll turn back off. It said goodbye and it turned off. Okay, let's try something else. Let's turn it back on. And then let's push this to the on position and see what it does. Okay. Still fine, chair moves, turn it back off. Okay, let's see if it's in the on position and we actuate the power with the remote power. Let's see if it turns it off. Okay, it does not. 
So this port only works if that switch is in the off position. Interesting. By the way, in case you're wondering, I did actually go through and fix the wheel hubs on both sides of this thing. We do need to take this thing out and actually do some testing with it. It's got these giant tires on it. This thing was purpose built for running around on the, the playa or whatever they call the surface at Burning Man. And it did that for a couple of years. But uh, yeah, really cool chair to have in the fleet. We got the electronic swap done. We still need to kind of clean up some of the wiring and stuff though, but uh, yeah, anyways. All right, let's move on to the next chair. Next up, we have the Invacare TDX SP2. This one does not have the touchscreen joystick on it. But so far, if it's like everything else, most all joysticks have monoports somewhere. So let's fold this up and have a look. Uh, oh, that's right. The armrests interfere with the backrest that I put on here. Uh, let's take a peek down here. Uh, hmm. Okay, this joystick does not appear to have the monoports anywhere that are accessible. There's a chance they could be underneath that mounting bracket, but that doesn't really count. And these are all screw holes. Uh, same for the few little holes you can see here on the sides. Those all have screws down inside of them. So there is a chance if we remove this from this bracket, it could have monoports down there, but that doesn't count for this particular scenario, I don't think, and also I don't feel like removing it. So this one, kind of a fail in that department. If they are under there, um, I guess you could take the joystick off because, you know, the power button, whoops, because the power button on this one is built into this knob. So once again, it is very likely that could be broken if something does hit it or there's any sort of impact or something like that. But uh, yeah. If anyone has one of these chairs and you do know if there's an easy way to connect a remote power switch to it, uh, let me know in the comments down below. I'm not super familiar with this particular control system just yet. Um, I did look around the back here where the cable plugs in and I didn't see anything there either. And almost forgot, we have an old Quantum Q6000Z back here. It's kind of piled high with stuff at the moment. The batteries in it are not in the best shape. But this thing uses the QLogic 1 control system. There we go, that powers up. And chair seems to move ever so slightly bit. And looking down here at the bottom of the joystick, it appears as though we have a couple of mono ports here. There's one that's labeled M, and then another one that has a power logo on it. Yeah, there's a, there's a little clear plastic plug in there. Let's see if we can pull that out. Oh, there we go, fell on the floor. As you can see, the chair is currently off. Let's plug this in. And there we go, it's powering up. And it moves. Turn it back off, same way. And once again, headphones save the day. I think that just about covers all of the joysticks that I have here in the warehouse. I did also look at the Dynamic Shark or the Mark V style joystick. Actually, it's the one the barbecue has on it. This style right here, this one does not seem to have any of the mono ports on it. Also, this particular version of the Dynamic Links also does not have the mono ports. This is one they typically use on scooter chairs. Actually, this is a golden compass that we had built a streaming desk out of a long time ago. But yeah, for whatever reason, the Dynamic Links joysticks don't seem to have the ports. But at this particular point in time, I think probably a majority of the power chairs that are out there, like rehab chairs, are gonna be Permobile, Quickie, Amy Systems, or Quantum. Probably Permobile and Quantum, to be honest. Uh, I don't have one of the Lynx REM400 joysticks to look at. That's the Dynamic Lynx joystick that has the big touchscreen on it. If you have one of those, uh, take a look around on it and see if you can find those ports. I have a feeling that they might, but I'm loosely basing that on nothing. So if you have one of those, leave a comment down below and let us know. So one thing that's probably good to do is to look at the joystick on your chair and try to figure out if it has those ports. That way, if you have a problem in the future, you know exactly how to deal with it and you don't have to go looking around or try to, you know, figure out if it'll work or not. And just get yourself some old dirty buds and uh, throw them in your backpack or whatever. Super handy.
Now obviously this doesn't apply to just flying, that's one use case where chairs tend to get damaged a lot. Uh, quick side note though, that Q6000Z I have over there, the only reason I have that chair is so that I can fly in an airplane. I probably wouldn't use it now because it doesn't have a recline, but I set that thing up so I could fold down the backrest and also the joystick on it. I've got a quick release set up so I can flip the lever, pull the entire joystick off of it, and I take that with me onto the airplane. That's a little bit more tricky on chairs, you know, that have seating control buttons and things like that. But anyways, that's a whole other topic for another video, flying on airplanes. I just thought of something from the auto parts store. Extendo magnets on a stick. wonder if this will work. All right, can you see my joystick? Ah, this one is powerful enough. Just barely, though. Actually, no, that seems to work pretty reliably. Oh, and it changed the mode. Interesting. Okay, so now that's in Bluetooth mode. There, it turned off. Yeah, that's the trick, depending on how powerful your magnet is. There, there's two magnet switches, or magnet sensors down in here, and depending on where you put that, it might, um, yeah, see we're in Bluetooth mode. It might actuate the other one. Let's see if we can switch this back to drive mode. Okay, so that's an interesting note. There is a chance with slightly weaker magnets that it may turn on the chair and put it into another drive mode or like seating mode or something like that. So maybe the whole magnet thing is not what you want to do. Just get some headphones and carry those. Anyways, thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed and uh, comment down below if you've had your joystick break and or why it broke and if there's any cool stories to go along with it or just dumb ones. It's always dumb stuff. I was trying to carry three plates of nachos at the theater and I ran into the arm rail with my joystick, uh, something. Right, I'll see you guys Thursday on the live stream.